Adam here from Adam's Everything EV. Welcome to the EV80 Kit Rewind. It's this week's cars, comments, news, and video summaries from this channel this week. And one deeper dive at the end. Let me know if you like the format. Let's jump right in. The top story this week is the BMW iX3. The embargo is up and so are the first videos. It's a brand new platform for BMW. I think they're sixth. And I watched all the reviews, so you don't have to. There's three big things BMW want you to know right off the bat. That's up to 463 horsepower, 21 minutes, 10 to 80%, which are both good. But the big one is 400 miles of range. This viewer wanted all-wheel drive, affordable 400 miles of range, this is probably as close as you're going to get before 2030. But let's look at the rest of the highlights. The first models are going to be all-wheel drive only. We've got 108 and change usable kilowatt hours. Batteries are CATL. Max charging is 400 kilowatts. Battery architecture is 800 volt. CarPlay is full screen. There's a DC bi-directional charging option. Yes, that's DC in inside your house. I don't know how that works, but it might be a thing. Vehicle to load, vehicle to grid, emergency backup. They're doing all that out of the charge port, which is awesome. And then there's the other stuff. There's no dog mode. There's no dedicated climate keep button. Remember, we're on the bleeding edge of technology here. There's no air suspension, but the suspension ride seems to be good based on the reviews. And I may have read this wrong and I checked a bunch of times, but based on the information I'm looking at, there's no cooled seats, at least right away. Yuck. Speaking of yuck, there's additional yuck. Flush door handles and capacitive touch steering wheel. However, the seats look exceedingly comfortable, like more comfortable than I've sat in in a long time type of comfortable. They also have my extensions for my tall folks out there. The newest and coolest thing is this panoramic display. It goes all the way across the front as you look towards the windshield and you can customize it to no end. Could be distracting, might be kind of cool. The looks are much more retro than the previous generations and there's nothing like a couple of illuminated kidneys. If you're into BMW or just looking for EVs on the bleeding edge of technology, check out the iX3. It's pretty impressive. Our next top car story involves the Subaru Trail Seeker. That might not sound half as interesting as the iX3, but it is pretty good as far as price and competitiveness in the market. The specs are out, and the big deal is the pricing. The premium trim, which is the trim of the Solterra that I have, starts at $40,000. And for an electric Outback that is definitely not an Outback because it's actually built by Toyota, that's a pretty good deal, especially since you're looking at 280 miles of range. What this reminds me of is the Volvo XC40 Recharge, at least as far as some of these specs, 4.4 seconds to 60, 150 kilowatt charging, and around 400 horsepower. The battery is 74.7 kilowatt hours. The difference between the Trail Seeker and the XC40 is, of course, the price. I think it's really reasonable for what you're going to get, especially in 2026 with no tax credit. Let me know your thoughts about the Trail Seeker below. And so far, both cars we've talked about have been pretty practical, so let's get nuts. Now you want to get nuts! The Toyota Super Hyper GT things are out, whatever you want to call them. I'm not really interested in any of them except the new Lexus. Lexus LFA because it is all electric. I don't care what the statistics look like, but I do think the car looks great, especially on a teenager's wall, because I think that might be as close as I'm going to get to it for a good long while. Along with details on the LFA, which are extremely sparse, they're talking about a solid state battery. Let me know what you think about solid state battery viability or when it will come out. Toyota says 2027. I say if you're waiting for solid state batteries for your EV, you probably won't be getting one. There's an entire supply chain built around NMC chemistry, NCA chemistry, LFP chemistry. There's a sodium ion chemistry coming to market. Those are fine. But if you've got to know how solid state works, grab you a 2027 calendar and mark it for the LFA delivery. Finally, on our top stories, Tesla hints at phasing out autopilot. That's right, we're talking about used models having autopilot removed. So if you're looking for even a premium long range model, it may not have autopilot. They're trying to, of course, get customers to upgrade to full self-driving. We don't know how widespread this is gonna be or if it's gonna be for every car, but what we do know is the subscription model isn't going anywhere when it comes to our lives. What are your thoughts on autopilot being removed from used vehicles? Let me know down below. 
Those are really your most important car stories this week, but let's look at what I got into on this channel. I had a busy week that started with a long drive in winter weather. The Blazer SS does 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour on the highway at speed in the winter time. A DC fast charging session, if you pick a charger right off the interstate, will cost you five minutes on top of the amount of time it takes you to charge. And the Blazer has cargo capacity for six antique mahogany chairs. Speaking of the Blazer, I also grabbed a 10 to 80% session at a Tesla supercharger this week. And the Blazer might just charge better in the winter than it does in the summer. I finished my 10 to 80% session in exactly 40 minutes, and it looks like the most efficient way to road trip the Blazer is to charge from 10 to about 55% before you take off. You're looking at about two hours of driving followed by about 20 minutes of charging, which really isn't that bad. But as my viewer notes is probably not the way to do it in Colorado. As soon as I got home from the session, I was notified about a software update from GM. Here's the version. And here on screen are all the improvements that GM made this time. It's a long list. Check out that video for more. I did answer a bunch of your comments as well. Speaking of your comments, I read and respond to every one I come across. Make sure you leave one if you have an idea for a video or any feedback for me. Thanks in advance. Next, I took a little trip in the Solterra and did some charging and it was, well, very slow. 28, 29 kilowatts is what the battery starts at when you plug it in cold and it does get faster over time, but not very. You're talking Chevy Bolt speeds by the time it warms up a little bit. Some of you thought that was egregious and uncalled for and unbelievable. Well, for me, I bought it as a fourth car and we just use it when the weather's bad and typically only around town. I will test it, obviously, and road trip it because you need to know what it's really going to be like. But for me, it's fine. However, it does show what not having preconditioning can do to you in the winter. Check out that video for more information. Next, I decided to share my hot take on CarPlay, which is that the SS Blazer EV is good enough with the GM software to not need CarPlay. And the subscription to OnStar and all that other stuff is free for three years for anybody who bought a vehicle in 2025 from GM. Would I pay for the subscription after the trial expires? Yes, for two reasons, Super and Cruise. You guys had some great feedback on your experience with CarPlay as well, from the fact that you don't have to pay any subscription fees to third-party apps and the way they work, and your workflows as well. Got another hot take? Let me know down below. And finally this week, we talked about the Maryland charger tax. It's $150 a unit, and the media wants us to think it's the end of charging and all chargers are now going to disappear. I beg to differ, but time will tell. That video is right here. And this video is brought to you by ev80kit.com. Learn about charging etiquette and things that can help you on the road along the way. Grab a sticker for your charge port or a t-shirt. And today I just want to send a sincere thank you for anyone who's gotten cards or stickers or a t-shirt or anything else from the website. I really appreciate your support. We've only got one more story left. Let's dive deeper. And this one is no fun. It's cafe standards. The goal is for them to be rolled back even more. We all know the big beautiful bill rolled back penalties, but now the regs themselves are what's at risk. So let's zoom way out and think about why the oil companies are focusing so hard on the American market right now. And this is a focus from the oil companies, I promise. Let me give you a juxtaposed comparison. April 9th, 2025, 104% tax on Chinese goods. Well, that was a lot of stuff that Apple made. April 11th, 2025. Almost all the stuff that Apple would make, that's laptops, computers, phones, etc., are exempt from these tariffs all of a sudden. All my small business owners here in the U.S. that purchased Chinese products for sale are still going to go under, but Apple's going to be fine. So why is this? Well, maybe it's because Tim Cook attended the inauguration, but I figured there were additional handshakes, let's just say. Someone asked for something, someone else got something. And to commemorate it all, there was a transparent disc with a 24 karat gold stand gifted live on TV. Bernie Sanders ran a campaign in 2016 and 2020 with basically all small donations. The current administration is exactly the opposite. Big packs, not two pack, not pack 10, strong conference by the way, but Super PACs are where a lot of the funding came from for the current administration. What's a super PAC? Well, it's a legal way for ExxonMobil to change its name to Save America or Turn Out for America. It is my opinion that these regs being rolled back are a reimbursement for those super PACs at the election. Maybe I'm wrong, and I'm definitely speculating. This is me putting I am speculating on the screen. This is an opinion. 
Opinions are protected by the First Amendment, at least for now. During the inauguration, different people were going to take over different things. We got wild on health. We got defense. But front and center was drill, baby, drill. And that liquid gold under our feet. These regulations being rolled back is supposed to aid automakers. There's no aid here. If you have to lay off 1,700 employees because of a policy change, which that's what it is, then that doesn't help anyone. And you may think that building more profitable vehicles is great, especially in the short term. And I would tell you that you are right in the short term. I have no idea why the markets don't react. It couldn't be the fact that you don't have control of your money that's in your 401k. Maybe it's that. But short-term decisions do not beget success in the long term. AI bubble, real estate bubble. It's my opinion that because the market is the way the market is, the entire U.S. economy right now is a bubble. And big auto is one of the biggest. Here's another microcosm. I sell all my used vehicles to Carvana because the price is unbelievably good compared to other companies. And every single YouTuber in 2023 or 2024 made a video called Carvana is going bankrupt or Carvana is toast or Will Carvana fail? Except it didn't. Carvana's out-of-court restructuring in 2023 was financed mainly by a large debt exchange that converted most unsecured bond claims into new senior secured notes and by continuing to fund operations through its auto loan receivables securitizations and working capital floor plan facilities. That exchange materially reduced near-term cash interest and delayed maturities. Does that make any sense to you? It's really tough to understand. Even for me, even after reading it several times. But I can explain it most easily by comparing it to something else. Similarity A, push risk into the future to maintain operational continuity. Similarity B, heavy dependence on securitization markets. Similarity C, increased reliance on secured claims and collateralization. Similarity D, financial engineering used to buy time rather than fix fundamentals. And similarity E, Fragility emerges when asset values stop cooperating. In Carvana's case, that's what's about to happen if. When was the other time? Well, the 2008 financial crisis. This is exactly what the housing market did. But why am I talking about the housing market? I should be talking about cafe standards. Well, short-term profits might help people some. I mean, it's not going to help the 1,700 workers that were laid off, but it might help some auto executives and some balance sheets. I guess that's who we're helping now. But are automakers and shareholders and consumers alike all going to be aided by fuel economy standards going down? Is the price of gas going down? No, because this is a global market. In the EU, EV registrations are up. And are they investing in EVs in Europe? Are they divesting from EVs in Europe? It doesn't matter because the consumers are choosing them and EVs are winning. But again, Europe also doesn't matter. Let me give you another number. 17 million. That's the number of EVs, not new energy vehicles, not PHEVs and EREVs. I almost puke every time I have to say those. But 17 million is the number of EVs sold worldwide in 2024. That's more than the entire U.S. auto market. It doesn't matter what we're doing over here unless we're trying to compete with China. 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 It's like one of those nights when you look up into the sky on a clear evening and you see that you are just a small speck in terms of the size and scope of the universe and how inconsequential your last thought previous to that, like the grocery store was out of asparagus, is just inconsequential at best. And inconsequential, that's also the U.S. market, my dude. <laughs> So what does this push even do? Well, we know it's not going to be enough. That's why we're trying to merge standards with the EU. I like how Google has the same spin that the administration has. Reduce costs and barriers for automakers. You got to look a little harder to find out why standards are trying to be standardized. Accepting U.S. standards would lower safety and emissions protections in the EU. There it is. <laughs> So let's break it down. A law deleted the penalties. They're now going after the regs. And after the regs get changed, they're going to try to push them all into Europe. Isn't this the exact opposite of tariffs? Like literally the exact opposite. Am I missing something or, or, or confused or... You can't handle the truth. The truth is EV sales are exploding everywhere. Well, unless you're Tesla in Europe. EV sales in Europe are exploding. Just Tesla is in the dumps. That was a bubble that has already burst. And yes, 
I have a Tesla in the garage and a power wall right over there. I was even starting to get excited about future offerings from the company until I started thinking about World War II. Half a million US troops died in World War II. What were we fighting for? Oh yeah, that. All right, that was a tangent, but what are my videos anyway without a tangent? Look, we can get behind the shift away from the future until the future hits puberty, and starts to hit back. Here's my final take. Oil companies know it's over. Time can be purchased in the form of delays and spending and elections and propaganda, but it's increasingly more expensive every day. Consumers will only buy what they can afford, and every consumer that tries an EV and has a place to plug it in knows that this gas car stuff is over. And if we had enough places for everyone to plug in, there wouldn't be any more hurdles. We can solve this, but we can't have this. I don't want to take long road trips in my electric car. Too stressful for me. That's unacceptable. Now you've got eight tires and two insurance payments. Uh-uh. I dove really deep on how to fix that in this video. And with that, you can let me know your thoughts. How is this for a format? Too short, too long, too many stories? Did I miss something? Let me know down below. Join Patreon or become a YouTube member for early access to videos. I cannot thank you enough for those supporting me right now. It means the world. Hit share if you know somebody out there that's going to find value from this video and subscribe for more. We'll see you on the next one. Smash the like button. Thank you.